we're going to look today at Servant Keeper live streaming. This is an exciting new feature. If you have the better or best Servant Keeper package, you can broadcast your organization's services online in real time. So in order to get this started, I've gone into my administration manager and then I'm going to click on SK Sites Sign Up. Since I've already clicked on this, I've got an option here to view my site. If I haven't done that yet, it's going to take me to a screen that will ask for some basic information here. You'll want to fill that out and then submit it through to get to your Servant Keeper site. That's going to take me to my Servant Keeper website. Now, if you've not been to your website before, first it's going to ask you to choose a template. So you can do that first, and then you'll end up in a place that looks something like this. On the left side, you'll see that I have this menu. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and click Administration. And then on the following screen, I'm going to scroll to the bottom again and choose Live Streaming. This brings me to my Live Streaming Management Console. Now I'm going to go ahead and click Get Started. So the system has just created for me my first channel. The next step is to install some software to allow us to broadcast to that channel. Now you can use any RTMP compliant streaming program, but we recommend one that is absolutely free and very powerful called OBS. And it's available at obsproject.com. So we're going to go there now. And as you can see, you can install either the Windows or Mac version. So go ahead and do that now. So now that OBS is installed, I'm going to go ahead and launch it on my computer. And it's going to bring me to a screen that looks something like this. Uh, the first thing I want to do is in my web browser, I'm going to close this tab and go back to my live streaming channel. I'm going to copy each one of these lines and put them into the correct place in OBS. So we're going to copy this and I'm going to go under settings in OBS and then under stream. And I want you for your service here to choose custom. And at this point I can paste in what I just copied and that is the server address. And then the next thing we're going to go back to the website is the stream key. So we'll copy that. I'm going to paste that in there. We can show it if we want. You need to check this box that says use authentication and then we'll copy also the username and the password. One other setting I want you to be aware of and I, was, I would make a recommendation here is under output. I'm going to recommend that you have your output set to 1000 kilobits per second. That is enough bandwidth to give you a, a nice basic high definition stream and yet it's not extravagant to the point that it's going to cause users difficulty in trying to view your stream for most connections. Uh, I do see some folks will put this up to about 2500. I would say much more than that. Uh, you're going to potentially start experiencing problems and dropouts with some of your users. So 1000 is a great number to start with and we'll go ahead and click OK. And the last thing I need to do in OBS before I can broadcast is add a video source. So I'm going to click the plus down here and choose video capture device. And this will work with any camera device that you have in your computer. So I have a webcam on my computer, so I'm going to choose that one. And it gives a preview of the video right there, and I'll go ahead and click OK. And I can size this up so that it takes up the full screen. And I'm ready to go. At this point, I can click Start Streaming. But we need to determine where that video is going to show up. So let's take a look at that real quick. If I'm on the Servant Keeper Best Plan, I can play it in three places. I can play it on my website and store it on my website. And I can also simulcast it to Facebook and YouTube and store it in those locations as well. You now, if I'm on the Servant Keeper Better plan, I can only do those simulcast options. I cannot use the local media player and the local storage on my website. So I am going to show those of you who are on the Best plan real quick how to add the media player to your website so that you can watch on your site. And then there's going to be two videos to follow up on how to do the simulcast to Facebook and how to do the simulcast to YouTube for those of you on the better plan as well as those of you on the best plan who want to make use of those things. So we're going to go ahead and click back to our our website tab and I'm going to add a new page here. I'm going to choose basic pages and then blank page with a small header. We're going to title this page something like live streaming and save it. title it up there as well. I do that just by clicking on it and then saving my changes when I'm done. And then I'm going to click add section down here in the content area and I'm going to find the video section. Here it is. And I will choose as my video type a live stream. 
and I'm going to select the channel that was created for me and click add section. So my video is now ready. As soon as I'm playing from OBS, then my video will show here. And let's take a look at that real quick. So at this point, back in OBS, I can click on start streaming. And there's about a 15 second delay before I will see that stream on my website. So we're going to wait that delay and then go click play. Once I click this, I should see my stream. And there it is, and it's working okay. So I'll go ahead and stop my stream now since I'm not really using this. But that is how to get a live stream functioning on your website. Now the next two videos are going to talk about how to do the simulcast to Facebook and YouTube. So you want to be sure to check those out.